Hi guys, um, we're gonna be working on a uh, game maker today. We're gonna be starting a new project that is gonna be a clone of a classic band, or I think it was also called Bust Bros in America, something like that. It's a classic game that where you take a role of a uh, sort of young boy, the young explorer, something like that. And there's kind of like an invasion of alien balls that bounce around, and you have to go around the world getting those balls, which basically um, with your with your hook gun or something like that. It's a uh, it's a classic. At least it was very very common in Spain uh, a long time ago, and I think it's a great example to show some. Um, advanced topics in Game Maker like um, better collision and more precise movement which uh, we will we will deal with in this project. <coughs> I have downloaded some um, resources, some sprites and uh, so you can see them here and, and backgrounds from the original game. You can find those in the uh, around the internet for um, uh, if you if you, in, I mean you can find those in the internet and I will probably put some links in the description of the video. But anyway, uh, you, you can see they are fairly simple. They are all from the original game or games because there are various various versions like. Band, band 2, and I think it's a pack 3. And yeah, um, we will most likely use um, this guy here for our character. So this is gonna be our idle position, and then we're gonna have this for our moving around. And um, yeah. <coughs> We're gonna use these for the hook, and we are going to use probably these balloon here, and these for the bricks. And we will use. I mean, this is a huge uh, sprite sheet. You could call it sprite sheet. It's all the backgrounds for the game. Uh, we're only going to use one, we're going to use the first one, just so which I've already extracted and have it here. As you can see, it's the, the size of this uh, spread is 768 times 416, which is going to be the size of our project, our room, more like it. So, um, yeah, let's, let's get on with it. We're going to start a new project, we're going to use a game maker language. We're gonna call. We're gonna put it somewhere. I'll put all my projects here. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't need to put it here. I just need to set it in here. Oh, yeah. Cool. So we have an empty project with one room. As I said before, we have to change the room size to be 6, 7, 8, and 4, 16. Is it correct? Yeah, 6, 7, 8, and 4, 16. Okay. So, here is the, the size of the, mm, of the room. Since I got a 190, uh, 1920 times uh, 1080. I'm going to make the room um, twice as, as long and, and twice as high, so I'm going to display it in a, uh, twice the size. To do that, I use a viewport. have to enable viewports. Um, in the first viewport, viewport 0, with the market is visible, and we said that the camera is going to be the, the room size. While the viewport is going to be twice that size, so I understand it's going to be something like this. I think that's twice the size. 
let's I want to make sure so two is correct and what is it two is correct. Cool. Yeah. We're not talking about anyone, that's at least not now. So we have this. Let's start creating sprites for our game. Let's create a sprite for the background, so we're gonna call it VR background. Or you can import an image, which um, yeah we have it. Yeah, yeah. Good. We don't care what the sun, sorry, the, the, uh, the center of this is. We're going to put it in the gears here, actually. This is going to be here. And that's right. Uh, we can also import, uh, we're going to create a sprite. We're going to put the sprite player idle. Okay. We're going to. Um, no, we're going to import, we're going to edit the image, we're going to go to image, import strip image, and go from here. As I said before, this is going to be our um, idle position. Then we're going to set like 62 times 96, maybe a bit less. It should be enough, yeah. So I believe that all all our character sprites fit in that square. So I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna put it there. So you see, um, we get it. So I'm two twenty four. Thanks. Uh, sorry, two twenty four. One eight. One oh four. But good. Now we're gonna remove the green around it, around well, the background green. Sorry. So we just this is not good enough. Maybe we have to increase the tolerance. That's better. It's better. It's a bit annoying to be honest. It's a bit annoying, but just gonna have this kind of like um, green thing, but when you zoom out you don't really see it. I wonder if we could even get a little bit better if I'm losing it. I don't think it do. Well this seems okay, let's say again, yes. So this is um, this our player idol and we're gonna add the uh, sprite SDR player block. Okay, so we're gonna have a player walk into an image. Again, image port strip image. Come, same one as we had before, and we're gonna start here. So. This one has, I think, one, two, three, four. I think this one is not. Uh, yeah, but that's like jumping or something. I don't know what it was used for, but um, we're going to use this four. So, what we're going to be doing is we want four frames, and they are all the same row. We definitely need one. you can move there or even this space so we can get the first two and we'll get the next two I think that's okay so again we go and remove transfer on 60 now we have to Oh, 
types and only you cannot add new images here and import them from a split side uh, split sheet sprite sheet sorry <coughs> so we're gonna create another one create sprite this here then walk to and then uh, image image import strip image we're gonna get that our second part of the animation which is gonna be Control C, go to the walk, get the image, uh, we we'll paste them at the end. Now we can get rid of these. Now we we'll just go here and again get rid of the background. Cool. So It looks good. We, it's still going a little bit back and forth, so we could try to make it move less. So that's a little I think this one is where it moves the most. So let's move this a little bit. with 
the same um, collision mask and the same um, it could even be smaller I think I think we can make it smaller something like 8 or even 9 because we want it to be really tight around the character so you don't feel like you've been hit uh, by something that wasn't actually hit in your seat. It's best to be uh, to go on the safe side in these uh, things. Like this, like 10 to 50. To be, yeah, 10 to 50. yeah, that's that's all right, I think. Even if we are leaving something a little bit there, I think it's okay. Yeah. Cool. So, good. So now we have all of these. We could put this um I think there's a second but we don't have to frame it so it's gonna be the same. Anyway. So we have three sprites, two for the player and one for the background. So let's um let's get another sprite for the ball. We're gonna edit the image and uh, we're gonna import from import the strip image. Open this. We only want one of them. We want this here. So we add a zero. We can add that. It's gonna be maybe 32. Maybe no, it's a little bit more. Sorry. That's because. Yeah, that's 32. So maybe we put it there and. Yeah, looks like it. Now, that's alright again. We're gonna remove the background. Cool. Now we have our ball. Our ball is now, our ball strike is now ready. We are. Uh, are going to scale the ball up and down for different balls. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, um, well, we'll decide whether we do it in this program or somewhere else. But from the time we're gonna keep it like this. So we we'll put it, and of course, uh, this one center is gonna be, sorry, origin is gonna be in the center. The origin of the ball is in the center. So there we go, we have all the sprites I think we're going to be needing, which is good. And now it's time to um, start working on the room. At least leave it, uh, put it, put a small, well, small, put the background in. So basically, go in here, so the background. We are going to need uh, more stuff. Um, I like to um well we're gonna in in this case we could actually use the so if you take a look with the with the right green sixteen times sixteen so you can see that the um, bounds where the where the player can play and the balls can exist are pretty well defined. They're 16 bits from the room, so 16 pixels from the room's margins. So anything that goes out of that direction, out of those margins, is going to be uh, outside, and we should bounce it back, which is good. And that's something. That's what we're going to be doing. And so. Yeah, we're not gonna define objects to define the collisions of the of the uh, borders of the screen, but instead we will we will check against the boundaries. This is gonna be a room, so it's gonna be uh, to the left 16, to the right room um, room width minus 16, and the top is gonna be 16, and the bottom is room height minus 16. So 
let's start creating the player object. I'm going to give it by the form of the player sprite. It's going to be visible. And just for the sake of it, let's create it here. No, oh, okay, not here in the instances, so create it here. So now we have a player and a, uh, a background. The player doesn't do anything, so if we run it, if we, run it we just uh, see that there is a background and player. That's alright. Um, so why did I do this? Yes, I mean, it's good to, to, to check what you've done often. So even if it's a small thing, um, I think it's good to check your your work uh, every few steps. In our case, we just added the sprites and the background. It, it shouldn't be all just fine, but anyway, what is the, the what is the harm in trying it? There's no harm. A year ago, and if there's something wrong, then we just fix it. For instance, we're seeing here that the uh, player center, so the origin, is like one pixel down than what we want. We want this to be right uh, where the line is, because that means that the whole sprite is on top of the origin. So we might go here and mark the origin as 74. I go here, mark the region at 71. And now if we go back to the room, then yeah, it's exactly it's lying on top of the line which is where I place the, the, the sprite. Good. <coughs> now we need the player to be able to move and to have gravity. And I want to use this as an exercise on how to do custom movement and, and with with some custom advanced movement. So we want to have gravity. We want uh, we're gonna want the player later to move on the surface, even to go up ladders, stuff like that. So we're gonna create an event for the step. We can add variables, and the first one is gonna be. Uh, uh, max speed. Set the max speed. No, no, six. Um, uh, acceleration is gonna be one, for instance, one. So the max speed is in pixels per tick. Six pixels per tick. That we're well, gonna think of thirty ticks per second. So that's steps per second. One hundred eighty pixels per second so you can cross the street in like four or or so um, seconds seems fair and acceleration is one pixel per tick square whatever you want to set like basically uh, this this is this means that the player has some inertia that the that the inertia that the time it takes to get to the full speed of six Six ticks, which is uh, roughly 0.2 seconds. If we want more inertia, we can put it in 0.5. If we want less, we can increase it to two. So the first thing we can do is we can um, allow for uh, horizontal movement. So the horizontal movement it's um, it's gonna be uh, dependent on the inputs. So the first thing we're gonna do is gather the player inputs. The way we do this is by setting a target speed. Speed, so we see it by default, 
if you would check it left, ek left, then that gets xd, let's see, uh, max speed, and it's if you would check ek right, I get xd, let's see, it's max speed. I'm using plus equal and minus equals because I want it if, if you are pressing left and right at the same time, I want this to be um, zero. Yeah, it's hundred percent. There's a video in there that you can you can see what it's um writing. So the next step is uh is to um Uh, update the speed, your horizontal speed, with your uh, movement. Um, I want to avoid using A speed and B speed here. I don't think this is the, the usually what you do in um, in in Game Maker. Mm, not sure if we should or should. Well, let's start using edge speed and maybe later we will change. Update here. So, we have created the speed offset. So, target edge speed. speed. We count the offset. with the acceleration and we increase the speed with the uh, clamped offset so yeah, this is why I don't like. Uh, so let's leave it like this, and let's run the game like this, and I will explain why I want to avoid using light speed in, in this in this case. So here we go. So yeah, we can move the character. It doesn't change the sprite, so let's do it. Let's change the sprite. Zero, we are gonna um, take the sprite uh, to um, so sprite. It's gonna be here. Player walk. And this is not play walk. Yeah, we do play walk, and we start. Same thing, so it's going to be with 
minus 1. And hence we want the idle sprite. If we are um, 
Eu não vou neto, vou ser espíritos eu. Então, why is it x is speed and the boom with minus 16? That x is boom with minus 16. And x speed is the minimum between x speed and 0. Let's um, 
let's add some variety. We can add uh, a variable called graph. We're gonna give it a uh, 0.5, for instance, 0.5. Uh, pixels per tick means uh, 15 pixels per second per square. Some accelerations here. Well, <coughs> anyway. This is the horizontal movement, which is wanted. Let's do uh, first the uh, So the first thing we're going to do is, if we are on the floor, we don't want to do anything. If R y is bigger than now, remember here we're not going to use the uh, sprite height because we are uh, we have the origin right at the fit of the object. So we can use that position as the position where um, where the mm, where the character is, and, and we don't need and we don't need to change that because this, you know uh, well, I mean. That's the position at the bottom of the character, and that's and that's correct. So if it's bigger than, and remember, it's not the bottom of the game maker is a higher number. Room height minus sixteen. They are equal. Yes. We need to find this value, and that's it. This is going to be the most common case, so we're going to do the first case to give. And then there's the second one. Well, we're not on the floor. Okay, we have the floor just in gravity. So. It means that um, v speed is equals ground. That's it. Um, what else does it mean? It means we have to do some checks at the end step with the boundaries.
Let's see what happens.